Hey Chiquis, okay today we are doing a gradient lace mani. Now this was, uh, I originally did this like a year ago and Jennifer McGuire in one of our Q&A sessions actually asked if I had ever, uh, if I had a video for it and I, I never filmed it back then. It was originally inspired by a uh, mani done by Lucy Stash. Uh, she is amazing. So anyway, let's get into it. I really hope you like it. It is a bit longer than my normal video so I apologise for that in advance but I think you're going to love it. I hope you will. Now the base for this mani is a gradient. So I've painted my nails with OPI's Alpine Snow and then added a coat of Sesh Feet. Waited for that to completely dry before moving on to the next step. Now because I've had a couple of questions in relation to wetting your sponge for, for gradients, I decided to do just that. And I'm going to do one nail with the wet sponge and one nail with the dry sponge to show you what the difference is. So you can see these sponges started out exactly the same size and once I wet it, I then sort of squished it in a paper towel just to get the excess water. You don't want any excess water on it, but it's super squishy and it's double the size that it was it was originally. So I'm already, I'm thinking this is gonna be good. I have wet my sponges before in the past, but I don't ever remember them reacting this way. I'm really excited. Now the polishes I'm using are both from Essie. They're the same polishes I used on the original Mani. I'm using my liquid latex uh, to protect the skin around my nails. Gosh, I wish I had have had this back when I did this originally because if I remember rightly, the cleanup was just awful, like a really big chore. So thank goodness for liquid latex. And now onto the gradient. We're going to do the wet sponge first and apart from it being wet, the, it's the only difference. We're going to be doing exactly what we would normally do with a gradient, paint the colors on the sponge and then dab those on your nail. So this is the first dab and I'm impressed with it so far. And then I'm going to come back in with a second coat. Now I have to say after the second coat, I was really impressed with how this worked out apart from, you know, that little bit of white, um, but that's not a big deal. That happens with a dry sponge as well. It's not a big deal for me. And I just um, got a paintbrush and just painted it in, but the actual gradient, I was really impressed with. So that's two coats. That's two, just two. And now onto the gradient with the dry sponge. As you can see, it's a lot smaller because it's not all swelled up with water. So just like with the wet sponge, we're going to paint the polish onto the sponge and then dab that on the nail. So that's the first uh, coat with the dry sponge and I don't believe that that's as good as the first coat with the wet sponge. So this is the second coat and I really believe that it requires a third coat because it's not as good as the two coats that I did with the wet sponge. So we're going to go back in with a third coat and finally that basically matches the one with the wet sponge which I only did two coats on. So in conclusion I believe a wet or better it's better put to say a damp sponge is better will give you a better gradient than a dry sponge. I'm absolutely on I was on the fence before but now absolutely not I am definitely a damp sponge girl. So once I finish my cleanup, I'm adding a coat of INM Nails out the door top coat before going on with the design. Now for the white lace design, I'm using white matte acrylic craft paint and I'm just putting that into my palette. I'm adding a very small amount of water. I don't want it to be too thin, but I want it to be thinner than it was in the bottle because I'm going to be trying to do some very fine lines. Now the brush I'm going to be using is my Nail Series 706 Short Liner Brush from the Stylish Nail Art Shop. As with this and everything else, all the details will be in the description box down below as per usual. Now to create the lace design, what we're going to do is a, initially a tiny little dot in the middle of your nail and that just helps you to find the middle of your nail and in hopes to get a uniform looking half circle near the base of your nail, near your cuticle. And next you're going to do another half circle but smaller and closer towards your cuticle. And then you want to come in with a dotting tool or you can use your paintbrush and put a little dot 
right in the center of that and then some dots around the outside of that. And next you're going to do some very fine lines and this is the reason why we thin out the uh, acrylic craft paint with a little bit of water and you're going to put all of those lines going one way. Don't worry if they're not perfect, they're not supposed to be. In fact it looks better, it really does look better if they're not because then they look a little more authentic. And once you've done those lines you're going to do uh, some more lines going in the opposite direction and crisscrossing over those original lines. And the next step is to paint another half circle slightly larger than the very first one that you've done and it makes it a lot easier because you've already got your original one as your guide. And next we're going to do some tiny little half circles and they are going to border that last my really big half circle. I know it's going to get confusing in a minute. And once you have all of those done you're going to do some more and those are going to be ones that join over the top of the last ones. I hope that makes sense. Oh you can see what I'm doing. And once those little half circles are done you can come in with a small dotting tool and put a dot on the end of each one of them. Now I'm just coming in with my dotting tool and increasing the size of that one at the top. And once all of that is dry you can go ahead and top coat. I'm using Sesh Beat for this one. And then on my pinky and my index, even though it wasn't on the original many, I decided to do what I was thinking would look like torn lace, but I'm not really sure if that's how it worked out. It's up to you if you want to go ahead and do that. <laughs> not sure why I did that. Oh well, doesn't matter. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much to Lucy from Lucy Stash for the original inspiration and thank you very much to Jennifer McGuire for even asking me to do it because I don't know why I didn't in the first place. So there you go. Okay, so let's get into our Q&A for this video. And I'm so cool that you actually stayed around for this. <laughs> okay, so first question is from Brie Anna. Brie asks, what do I use for my editing for videos? And I use iMovie. And then I also on Instagram use Lumify app and I use a watermarking app to watermark it so it doesn't get stolen by some nasty pasty nail art thieves. Next question comes from Nilufar Yasmin. She asks, do I paint the same design on my other hand? And the short answer is no. <laughs> I am. She says that she looks that it would look rubbish if she did hand painting on her other hand. And I'm with you, honey. It would look rubbish if I did that too, so I don't. I do know that if you practice, like a lot, you can actually train yourself to become ambidextrous, but I don't have the time for that, so I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah, there's, well the short answer is no, I don't. Next question comes from Rebecca Carson. Rebecca asks, what do you do when you get paints blocked? Like what do you do when you need inspiration for a nail design? Well, it depends on what I'm doing and um, Google Images is your best friend. But apart from that, uh, YouTube as well. Sometimes I'll actually just Google a colour in Google Images and see what it comes up with. There's inspiration everywhere, like literally everywhere. Next question comes from Kira White. Kira asks, first of all, thank you for pronouncing my name right and second, my watermark question. <laughs> well, my niece's name is Kira, so that's how I knew. Uh, my water is room temperature but all my polish doesn't spread but when I it does spread it doesn't want to move into a pattern. Okay so water marbling is a sticky issue and it depends on the polish you're using. Um, sometimes uh, it's better to use a newer bottle of polish. If you're using old polish that's probably not going to work very well either and it's just a matter of uh, trial and error really. I know that Sally Hansen um, works usually very well but sometimes if you're using an old bottle of Sally Hansen it might not work so well and the same with OPI or China Glaze or even Pipe Dream Polish although I've never heard that happening with that polish ever. Next question comes from Priscilla Badola. Priscilla says can you please do a Barbie nail tutorial or something really girly and where are you from? 
thanks Pierce I love you firstly I love you too and I'm from Australia and yes I can do something really girly and maybe even Barbie the next question comes from XXX Mandy XXX Mandy asks about sesh feet ruining nail decals now the trick of sesh feet is to float it over your nail rather than painting it now this can happen with any top coat not just sesh feet but in particular with sesh feet and this is one of the reasons why I love it so much is that if you float it over your nail you're less likely to do any smudging and the last question today is from Nikki C Nikki asks about the dreaded sesh feet shrink I've never really had the problem but I know that a lot of other people now Nikki also mentions that she read that you can prevent it from happening if you apply the sesh feet while the polish is still tacky now that makes complete sense to me because I know that sesh feet actually dries through the layers of polish not just the top coat and that's why when you wake up in the morning you don't have sheet creases on your nails which we all hate and it's just awful and it will never happen to you if you use sesh feet pretty much guaranteed and that's it for this one thank you so much for watching this terribly long video oh and thank you for subscribing and thanks for that delicious thumbs up bye